sorry morning everybody i know it's early but bear with us we're home stretch we're we're, we're almost there so first i want to thank you guys for coming to this panel it's the humanist celebrants providing important and meaningful life services panel good morning hey hey y'all come on come on and today we are going to be talking with these two ladies again um we have um Candace, yes, <laughs> sorry. Well, but we again, we have Candace Gorm. She's a licensed professional counselor and the founder of the Ebony Exodus Project. And we have alongside her the illustrious H H W I C <laughs> of Black Non founder and president of Black Non Believers, one of the fabulous feminist three who founded the Women of Color Beyond Belief Conference. Mandisa Thomas. So to start off, I'm going to be honest. Um, when I saw the phrase humanist celebrant, I had no idea what that was until maybe about a week ago. <laughs> but um, after looking it up, it it's it it really looks like a beautiful and and you know much needed thing. And I'm actually thinking about signing up as one myself because um you know we could I'm sure we could use a lot more of us in New York. So um so let's talk about it. So um ladies um what inspired each of you to become a humanist celebrant? Um for me well I of course my background is I was a minister anyway. So you ah. know those kind of life celebration events were kind of right up my alley anyway. Um and so I, you know, being aware that there's not that many options for non-believers, and historically it has not been. Um, it's just something that I wanted to to do and to be a part of myself. Cool. I would say for me, and I just became ordained uh, as a humanist celebrant and, and endorsed as a humanist celebrant this year, and. In my work with Black nonbelievers in building community, uh, at first there were inquiries into our members getting married, and um, you know they they absolutely were uh, you know very hesitant about you know getting married in a church, especially if their partners were religious as well. And I realized that in order to build community, there needs to be more community services, and this is one of them. Um, when we, when it comes to everyday life as non-religious people, um, this doesn't, you know, in building new lives, this is a part of, you know, a everyday uh, service that can be offered for people. And um, I actually took the Humanist Celebrate course through the, what was the Humanist Institute at the time, which is now the Humanist Society. And so uh, it was really, it was something that I wanted to add to my, my skill set, my repertoire, if you will. So, um, but when one of my members asked about whether I did weddings, um, at first, I was actually going to refer them to Candace <laughs> because I know <laughs> she is, a, you know, she is a celebrant as well. But um, the more I thought about it, I said, you know, I need to complete this process for people who are local to Atlanta and whoever, whoever wanted to, you know, um, you know, to whoever wanted me to do their, um, you know, their, their ceremony or, or what have you. So I thought, yeah, I, I might, I, it's best to do it because it is a good community tool to have. And, um, you know, our members needed to have more access to, to um, being a celebrant. And I'm very festive as well. As you can tell, I love putting together events that bring people together. And in that, I, I just, it, it was just a good way to expound upon that. Excellent. And agreed, you know, we're still sort of a, we're still sort of a minority and, you know, minor, you know, us being a minority 
Um, it means that there are less and less avenues and less and less access to certain types of um, services that we need for us. So it's good to see more of us stepping up to provide those type of those types of things. Um, why are humanist celebrants an important part of a community service, especially for communities of color? Um, why, why are humanist celebrants important to, I think that, you know, uh, as the non-believing, not irreligious community grows, you know, people still want to mark important events, right? We still want to mark births and deaths and marriages and baby naming, you know, we still want to, you know, gender, you know, bringing your gender identity into you know, conformity with your body, those sorts of things. Like people still want to um, be able to celebrate and mark those things, you know. And um, I think that our community, you know, we need, we just need resources for people that can do those same things in a, without the religion. And to have somebody that, um, you know, some people, they'll, they'll have their ceremony with, you know, a regular minister or whatever. And then they got to have this uncomfortable com conversation about like, well, I don't want this in it. I do want this in it. Please don't say this. Please don't say that. Whereas, you know, if you just have a humanist celebrant up front, you know that that any religious stuff is not even going to, you know, be an issue or be a concern. And so, you know, as our, as the black non-believing community grows, we'll need more people that can provide those same services because people are going to always want to, mark important milestones in their life. Agreed. Uh, I'd like to um, add to what Candace said uh, regarding the representation piece and standing up for ourselves. And we talked about that. That was, that was discussed yesterday in the Death, Dying, and Disbelief panel, where oftentimes um, atheists and non-believers are grossly misrepresented by religious family members and friends, and there is a lot of hesitancy to have those conversations because uh, they feel like people won't, you know, the people, uh, their loved ones won't understand. And so for humanist celebrants, for, for us, you know, we're going to take more of what the individuals or couples wishes are into more consideration because it is not about the belief it is not necessarily about the perspective. We do represent that perspective. Mm -hmm. However, it really is more about what the client or what the what that person wants to be represented. And um, you know, it, it's a good way. It, it's an, it's important for people to stand up for their for themselves and their secular principles. And the ceremonies should reflect that. It absolutely should reflect that. And it should be, it should give the larger community uh, an uh, uh, added, um, you know, added insight into how we live, you know, how, what, what it is that we do. And the fact that we don't necessarily have to have these long drawn out ceremonies that have nothing, you know, that have nothing to do with what's, you know, what's, what's in front of us, but it's more people. And then also it's a good way to redefine tradition because oftentimes in these rituals, uh, there's a, there's a lot of tradition in it. There's a lot of ritual in it and people are tired of that. <laughs> you, know, you may yeah. want something, something more simple and also just something, um, you know, something less, uh, you know, something a little shorter, but also <laughs> something more festive in nature. You know, I think it's a good way to, and to be more creative. It's a really good opportunity to be more creative and to show people that you can, there are options all across the board when it comes to these ceremonies and the fact that our communities, like Candace said, are growing. And so again, the services can, and they should reflect these changes. And can I just add in brevity of the ceremony is of utmost importance. You ever <laughs> been to a black funeral, wedding, you know, baby naming ceremony, like any of them, they're going to yeah. go on for hours. Somebody going to preach a word. They're going to have an altar call. 
Like, we need to cut all that shit out. Because I just felt something in my spirit to share with y'all today. (laughs) Right. And when you look at also some other, like, cultural ceremonies, you know, Mm -hmm. they're, I mean, they're they're beautiful. Some of them are beautiful to look at. Mm -hmm. But then you also have you know, like you said, these prayers and all these other things that you do. And you're like, oh my gosh, can we eat now? (laughs) Exactly. And especially for like, let's say if it's for a wedding, let's say if you've ever been part of a a bridal party and, um, you know, I was, I was a bridesmaid for, uh, for this lovely couple. I'm still friends with them to this day, but they were wedded in a Catholic church and just, you know, it was beautiful because, you know, and of course churches, since they get the most money, they can afford to be beautiful and deck out all the, you know, stained glass windows and stuff, you know, Catholic church. Yeah. But just this, just the, the ceremonial parts with the prayer and, you know, maybe, you know, lighting some candles, lighting may, you know, maybe lighting some candles yeah. and all, you know, just all the, all the rigmarole that comes with, that comes, you know, with, with religious practice. It's like, man, listen, I've been up since 5 a.m. I had to get my hair straightened and curled. And, and, you know, (laughs) what was worrying if these white women even were going to be able to do my hair, which thankfully they 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 actually did. And it was nice. I got to be in this wedding dress and it is it's comfortable, but in some ways it's uncomfortable. I got to be in it all day. And then, you know, because we got to go out and take, you know, go out to some place out in bubble West Bumblefuck and take, you know, <laughs> wedding photography pictures and do all we have all this other stuff that we might have to do. Can we speed the ceremony up, up along <laughs> just a little bit? Right. And it's OK if people want to have like the, the glamour of the weddings. Mm. Right. You know, but I think what's important is that people know that it's that is in itself an option. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have this big grand wedding that you're spending all this money on that you're still paying off in the event that you get divorced. Yeah, (laughs) which is is yeah, (laughs) exactly. You don't know what you know. What well, damn, what costed me more money, the actual wedding or the divorce? Because there's sadly there's a business (laughs) behind that too. So. Right. And, it, you know, you can you can have a ceremony that is simple and beautiful and doesn't have to be so long. It doesn't have to be so uh, intricately involved with like religious, cere- you know, r- with religious ritual at all. But, you know, again, creating your own ritual. Um, and, you know, I think some uh, we have other humanist ce- celebrants in the audience with us. Uh, oh, and, God. you know, they, there may be some candle lighting ceremonies, but it's just not as, you know, it, it probably is not anywhere near as long as like a traditional wedding. So mm-hmm. <laughs> and, not, and not steeped so much in the ideology. Also. Right. Yes. It is not steeped in the ideology, which is great. Mm-hmm. And also, um, no, uh, I'm guessing you guys, if the couple, if, let's say if a couple wanted some sort of counseling, because you know how some, some um, Protestant churches, they require, you know, before couples get married to sit down with the pastor or reverend or whatever for like for marriage, you know, marriage pre-counseling, which it's like if if things aren't at least 75 percent OK before you before you you guys walked down the aisle, you got bigger problems than that. <laughs> right. So I am not a licensed professional counselor. Right. So no one needs to be uh, looking at me for counseling. About anything, <laughs> right? you know? right. And because everyone's relationship and marriage is different, mm-hmm. I certainly would not want to offer that kind of advice to couples. I really think they would need to see a per, you know professional. I mean, off the record, if they have any questions, Um, because I am married, um, you know, as, as a married person, I might be able to offer some insight, but as far as like, don't, don't put my stamp on, you know, on anything Mm -hmm. (laughs) marriage related, you know, I know in some States, like for example, in the state of Georgia, you can opt to, you can opt out of the fee for the marriage license. If you do the marriage counseling. So yeah, I, I, I know at that time, yeah. Uh, so there are some states that that um, that that offer that option. 
So yeah, if you do have that, you can you can have the marriage fee waived if you do that. Wow. So yeah, but it, it's always good to check with your state Racket. on that, you know, just to get better, you know, a better um, insight or, or more information about that. But yeah, every, and, and I really, really don't like the fact that Georgia is still one of the states where LGBTQ marriages are not recognized uh, legally. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this is also goes back into the community piece because this is something that I think we could possibly like lobby and advocate for because we are in favor of LGBTQ marriages and non-traditional marriages or ceremonies. And so the fact that there are still some states that have those laws on the books is just unethical, in my opinion. And so I, I really think that that is an important piece there. Um, so we, we'll, we'll get to questions in the, in the Q&A. Mm-hmm. Or <laughs> that, yeah, don't but. worry. Well, yeah. Yeah. So thank Yeah. So, you know, you leave the counseling and all that other stuff to the professionals because, you know, Mm -hmm. everyone thinks that when it comes to, you know, marriage and pair bonding that, you know, if you can't see an actual professional that like, you know, that a religious leader is the next best thing and more often and more times often than not, it's not the best thing. (laughs) Well, I am a licensed professional counselor. I have not had anybody approach me for um, premarital counseling or anything like that before, but I I would be willing to do it as a as an actual professional. Yeah, because you're now. a professional. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you because you're a professional. You're right. you're in a position to be able to help people to, you know, help people navigate, you know, going into these types of these types of, you know, of, of relationships, these types of situations. So, you know, and you're in your case, you're qualified, mm-hmm. you know, in general, like not a lot of not a lot of reverends have that qualification. Mm-hmm. You know, they think they do because of, you know, because of the ideology, but a lot of times it, it seems like it, that does more harm than good. So, okay. So in your opinion, what is most important to keep in mind when creating meaningful and memorial and, and, and memorable experiences? Oh, that's easy. I think it's just all about honoring the wishes of the of the client. You know, um, it looks like me talking about the client. <laughs> that's counselor speaking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, the, the yeah, the people whose service you're providing for. Um, I think that's the most important thing is to always just take into account what they want, you know, and to be sure to just honor that to the best you can. Um, the last wedding that I did. Um, they didn't hardly give me any direction. And I was like, tell me something, like, give me some direction. <laughs> and they were like, just make it funny. You know? And so I was like, okay, what? I can do funny now. I can do funny <laughs> all day long. We wanted to make jokes while I'm up here, you know, officiate, and I do that. Um, and so that was their only thing was just don't bring any religion in, which of course we knew that anyway, and be fun, make it funny and lighthearted. So I had to figure that out on my own. I kept trying to elicit information and guidance and they kept being like, I don't know. I don't care. I don't know. I mean, (laughs) sure. If they're honest about it, but it's like, but still even that, like, just make it fun. It's like, well, what does that mean? Because, you know, you don't want to overstep any boundaries. So it's like, well, what's your definition of fun? What right. would you like? You know, because it's it's for you, and it you know it, it encourages people to actually remember that this ceremony is about you guys. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's not just y'all showing up. Even though yes, you know, it's you know it's it's faster than dealing with you know traditional ceremonies, but still, it's it's your thing. So mm-hmm. tell me what you want. Exactly. So for the, uh, I did have a pre-meeting, a couple of pre-meetings with the couple I married uh, this year. And um, they did tell me they wrote their own vows. And so I asked about, you know, the order of the ceremony, how things were going to go. And then uh, the wedding coordinator sent me the, the schedule, the itinerary. And when I saw some of the, like the songs that were being played, I kind of based some of my wording around that. So this is a young black couple, uh, probably about millennial age. Mm. And so, you know, and, and I incorporate my love, I incorporated my love for hip hop into the ceremony, right? <laughs> so it was a good way for, especially with this being my first official ceremony to, um, you know, just really think of a creative way to flow with the wedding program itself. 
to kind of add a bit in there. And along with some of the, you know, somewhat traditional things, you know, with the, you know, with the I do's and with, you know, with the, the ceremony and, and such. And, um, you know, uh, I just, um, you know, just really, really made sure because I'm a person who likes to make sure details are correct <laughs> in case you didn't already know. So, but, um, I appreciated that I was able to, they, they didn't, you know, they didn't want a long wedding ceremony because it was an, it is a inter, it is an interfaith marriage. So the wedding itself, the ceremony, they agreed to, uh, it would be non-religious and humanist in nature. And then the ceremony itself, that's a, that's a whole nother panel. It's a beautiful wedding, but who, <laughs> it, got into, it really got into that religious stuff at the, at the reception. Oh boy! So yeah, it was a very, very, a uh, uh, Nigerian bride. So, uh, oh. if you've ever been to one of their weddings, they're very elaborate, very beautiful, mm-hmm. but yeah, there's a lot of religiosity <laughs> in those, yeah. in those weddings. But, um, but when it came to the ceremony itself, um, you know, we did discuss those particulars and, you know, I actually added some things in as a surprise and, and they actually, they, they enjoyed the ceremony. They thought it was very well put together. And the fact that, yes, I did honor their wishes of what they wanted. And um, it was, it, that was, that was definitely the most important part is just definitely honoring what the client wants. And even if they don't know what they want, maybe just ask a few questions and then we can kind of guide from there. Yeah. I mean, it helps when you understand their personalities. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Cool. So lastly, um, um, where if folks want to become a humanist celebrant, um, where, where would you suggest that they uh, apply to? Okay, yes. So first and foremost, if you are interested in becoming a humanist celebrant, the first step would, one of the best programs, uh, in my opinion, would be to look into becoming endorsed by the Humanist Society, which is a... Uh, you know, which which is uh, affiliated with the American Humanist Association. You do have to take a course. You do have to find um, at least three people who will endorse you. And I have two of them in the room with us today: uh, Gail Jordan and, and Howard Katz. Uh, who and and Sakibu. Sorry, three. <laughs> three, three of my endorsees are in the room today. So um, I really appreciate it. I appreciate your support for my, you know, for, for my transition into this role. Um, and, but you can also become ordained through Universal Life Church. I know it's very, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very simple way. They are a non-denominational organization. And I've noticed that in their materials, they have started incorporating some like non-religious, the non-religious aspect, you know, they, they're, you know, they they endorse LGBTQ ceremonies. Uh, so I, I have, uh, you know, I have two uh, ordinations. I know that the Center for Inquiry has a secular celebrant program, but I think they're only, um, I, I think they're only legal or, or, or valid in certain states. But the Humanist Society and Universal Life Church are valid all across the U.S. Mm. So all you would need to do is make sure. And, and it is a religious ordination that that is important to note. But um, the Humanist Society, because there are principles, the humanist principles that you need to be aware of and how to do ceremonies, it is a good way to um, you know, you have to be an active member of, or a good, a member in good standing of the American Humanist Association. You know, there is a course, there is a fee involved for the course and a fee involved to, you know, to, uh, to apply, but it's well worth it. it. It is well worth it to become certified as a humanist celebrant and for people's, and there's also a directory. They add, you're added to a directory of, cel- of, of celebrants and it is time to get some more people of color on that list. Let's uh, let's just you know be honest about that. So um, 
You know, it's not that the resources aren't out there because they are, but they are a bit more difficult to find. But I think that the, the more we build our network there, then it becomes more readily accessible within our community so that people can reach out to us and say, hey, you know, I would like to either get married or I'm having this ceremony, or I'm having this funeral, and I would like to seek your services. Mm. Anything? Oh, no, I don't have anything to add. No, she had all the places. <laughs> I'm like, next question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. <help> me. <laughs> so, yeah, that's probably, I think that's going to wrap up the discussion part of the panel. Thank you so, so much you guys for giving uh insight and i'm i'm definitely going to start looking and in, looking into that definitely so Good. i'm going to open up the panel for for questions so if you want to come up to the microphone no how we're going to sit back down no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> Turn the mic up. Yeah, sorry. Don. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I actually two questions. Uh, first of all, uh, to, to the two of you, what's the most unusual venue uh, you've done a wedding? And I know you haven't done too many yet, uh, Mandy. But what's the most unusual venue you've been in? No, no. I've actually only done one oh. ceremony as a as an atheist um and so it wasn't anything unusual okay it was like a restaurant ballroom when you do one in a bowling alley let me know oh uh, yes. i'll, I'll tell that story later but uh mendes i'm curious why you say uh same-sex marriages aren't legal in georgia because my understanding is they are now legal in all 50 states because of the supreme court decision seven years ago eight years ago there are, I thought there were some states that actually, no. none of them? Okay. It's legal in all 50 states. It's illegal? It is in the legal. State of, in, the code of, in the state of Georgia, same-sex marriages still are not recognized legally. Yeah, I, trust me, I looked at that. It's it's most likely because of the of the federal and state separation. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so something uh, something may be, le may I, be legal. I think for, if you know of any couple that decides to get married and uh, they're not recognized, that's a good lawsuit and i can i, I we, oh yeah that's yeah, that's that's, that's, that's yeah oh, those me. are already in motion most definitely okay Be because i i can i can name five organizations that are just you know mm -hmm. here in this room today that would love to have those cases yeah trust me i looked up this the code for like um for marriage in the state of Georgia, who can, you know, who can perform marriages, what kind of marriage is illegal and unfortunately on this on the books it still says that like same sex marriages are not legal and um that that bothered trust me that bothered okay me. my my <laughs> and, and my understanding and i'm just, i'm not a lawyer but my understanding is that they can be on the books but they are they can't be enforced because of the supreme court decision okay they pro it's it it may be but that it you know but trust uh in a lot of states that are mostly if they're gop controlled legislatures they definitely it enforce their state laws in regards to that okay or they try to they, and they get the sued try to part is is yeah we, we we have to make sure that if they try, they fail. Yes. yes. Oh, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Howard. Yeah. This Thanks. we're we're definitely talking about like you know the legal the legal fights that we still have to deal with. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. So there was a question from the chat that uh, about um, about certain states don't take certain kinds of officiants. Um, actually, most. Um, like I said, uh, CFI's program, I think, is only valid in certain states. The Humanist Society is recognized as a nationally religious organization. So therefore, um, any credentials from the Humanist Society should be valid anywhere. Um, now, for those states who 
again, might have an issue with the humanist celebrant, then that's also another legal issue that we might be fighting. But because it is a religious organization, any state or any state official should be able to, um, you know, do their due diligence and, and, and see that it is a nationally, uh, a nationally recognized religious organization. Yeah. People just going to have to get used to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe it, it, for some people, it might be confusing as to why, uh, I guess, a, a, suppo- a supposed, you know, non-religious organization may be considered a religious organization by law, but that actually does um, secular orgs a favor because it enables them to, it, it, it yeah. pretty much opens the door for them to be able to do, to give services like that. So I know it seems like a conflicting thing, like, oh, like American Atheists is a religious organization, but they're, but they're irreligious. Right. So what? <laughs> it's, it is for the classification of the services that are being provided. Yeah. And so, yeah. So I have two questions. And the first is kind of related to that. How much does legality play into it? Meaning that um, if you are bought, you have to like take being a lawyer, you have to be barred in states. So, um, and then you have to take these classes to, to keep up with your, your knowledge and to the ever-changing laws. So my question is, uh, how much uh, sort of does this collide with legal sort of stuff? Like how much law is in, I know we talked about religion, but also how much law is in it. And then do you have to take test every two years or something? Or do you have to take the test? Let's say you move to North Carolina from Georgia. Is there a, 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 a test or a updated class that you have to take as a celebrant? Okay, so the answer to that is um, no. Uh, So with every state, of course, every state varies. For the state of Georgia, you know, and and the thing is that, you know, once you become like a minister, that does give you license to do. Once you say you're a minister, you're automatically, you know, in, in, you know, you're automatically ordained to perform weddings. Now, um, the thing with the humanist society about taking the course that I think is, is good um, to do because it's good to know how to do ceremonies, how to um, check with the requirements of your state or whatever state you're going to be performing the ceremony in. Um, that, that's, that's very important. Now, for the humanist society, you have to be recertified every two to three years. Um, you, it's, uh, it's five Oh, okay. Um, you have to you have to be recertified through the Humanist Society. You have to show that you've done you you've performed a certain amount of ceremonies. It's usually not very many, but um, you know you you have to have a certain amount number under under your belt in order to be recertified. Now, with the Universal Life Church, I know there are some there are some resources that they offer that I think everyone should look into in order to stay up to date on not necessarily the legal requirements, but also different ceremonies, you know, how to promote yourself and, and how to tailor your, you know, your, your ceremonies. And, and, and I think that that sort of stuff, th- those sort of, um, those sort of things are always good for the celebrant to keep up with on their own so that um, that we are making sure that we are providing the correct information for for our clients. Yeah, I was just going to say the main thing, I think, is to always contact the jurisdictions, you know, to make like the county that you're going to be performing the ceremony and just to make sure there's not anything in particular that you need. And surprisingly, most of the time they're like, no, we don't need anything. They don't need any evidence that you're ordained. They don't need anything. You just sign the thing, you know, and you write minister or, you know, whatever in the little line after you sign the certificate. And that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, I know some places do require you to actually submit credentials and stuff like that. Like I, that there are places that do that, but a lot of places don't, 
So, like, any one of y'all could probably do a ceremony. And, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, if, if they ran some kind of audit or something or wanted to come back and get evidence of your marriage or something, you need it to be legit. But yeah, I know for my for my ceremony, I submitted both copies of both of my certificates, mm-hmm. both of my credentials. Mm-hmm. And so that I figured both is better than none. So yeah. had to, no, they, they just to? needed one, oh. you know, for the state of Georgia, you had to submit a copy of your credentials, but I just sent them both <laughs> you know, after yeah. I filled out the application mm-hmm. after the wedding. So I figured it better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, I know in North Carolina, a lot of places in North Carolina, you don't need to offer any proof. And then the one set one that I did recently was in Detroit and they didn't need anything. So. Yeah. Well, that's something for me to think about, especially like since, you know, most a lot of my immediate family lives in North Carolina. So um, I could, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Foxy, can you come down here and do this wedding real quick? I'm on my way. Yeah. Um. I just have a quick question about, um, so I, I am ordained through the Universal Life Church, but I got really nervous um, when it came to putting my like profile on this app, um, Thumbtack Pro, if you want to promote yourself like you're a contractor or whatever, um, because I have you guys ever had to help someone write their vows and for the um, humanists, um, society is there like um because uh the universal life church gives you like you know kind of um a standard yes ceremony mm-hmm. is there one for that okay. yes the human so society does that. have a handbook mm-hmm. uh of uh, examples of um like wedding ceremonies uh, that you can that you can draw from mm-hmm. in your you know in in your uh yeah, you, you can definitely, there is a handbook that the Human Society has that you can look to for um, if you want to take something from there, how to do the ceremonies. Yeah. And uh, yeah, both of them, um, yeah, both of them do that. But the Human Society one is, is very, is very in-depth. Okay. Mm-hmm. And has anyone ever asked you guys to help write their vows? Like, you know, not yet. That yet. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. Uh, the couple that was just like making funny. Yeah, I had to. I wrote their vows. <laughs> yeah. Like, were they pleased, or did they? You did you like give them a a version of it before for approval, and then like how how did that no, go? No, literally, the lady was like, "I want you to just make it fun," and I was like, "Well, do you want to see the vows?" And she was like, "Nope, I trust you." <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, right. it isn't always going to be that easy. Yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> well, that's not easy to me. I thought right. that was harder. Right. Yeah. Write the vows. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, "Y'all sure y'all don't want that. <laughs> Especially depending on you know the type of person that you are, like you can. That's a well, that's I'm going to make for... some jokes that I want to make yeah. sure y'all think it's okay to make some jokes. Exactly. Because <laughs> like, that's was, a recipe. Good, though. Yeah, good. yeah, it did. I was yeah. at that wedding. So, yeah, yeah. it was good. It was, it that's, was great. A recipe for sh- <laughs> that's a recipe for straight shenanigans there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Next, Next question, question in person. We'll get to two, the two that are um, in the chat. Yes. Um, I have a question. Of, uh, it's more of a legal question. So I don't know if you have this. Um, but um, why is in those states where it needs to be religious? How is that legal? If if marriage, at if the state recognizes a marriage, then why would it have to have a religious credential attached to it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's an American a, thing, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that that's a good power. Do you want to come up and answer that? <laughs> All right, we got. It. Yeah, there might be some. Uh, is there some specific history to it? I just uh, there are some states, and they they still have it on their their books that wet marriages can only be solemnized by, and then they list the categories. And for the most part, it was uh, religious people and justice of the peace or a judge. Right, right. right. So uh, when the Human Society uh, was first incorporated back in, ni- it was either 1919 or 19, oh no, I take that back, uh, 1939. Uh, it was out in California and it was uh, put together by a group of Quakers. And uh, what they did is they, uh, back then, because of the 
qualifications that was in the California law where they where the group was from, they organized as a religious organization for the sole purposes of doing non religious ceremonies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so it looks like it's sort of what we touched on before. Right. Why certain why non religious right. Right. organizations right. sign up? But yeah. uh, it depend it depends on the, on the state law. Uh, most of the places, very honestly, rarely question anymore uh, where you uh, you know what your credentials are as mm -hmm. long as uh, you could do it good. We had a case with the Humanist Society. Uh, and this was back almost 15 or 20 years uh, or more where a uh, county near Indianapolis refused to uh, recognize the wedding of somebody done by one of our celebrants simply because uh, the clerk didn't recognize the Humanist Society in the Illinois state law. Mm -hmm. Well, the celebrant happened to be on the Illinois uh, American Civil Li Liberties Union board mm -hmm. oh. and their uh, lawyer wrote a, a letter saying, who are you to decide what somebody's religion or non-religion is or isn't? And we'll be very happy to take this to court. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden that clerk decided to recognize that wedding. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but a, a lot of states, um, like here in Illinois, uh, as long as part of the law reads, as long as one of the, the uh, people in the couple think that the officiant is legally able to do the wedding, the yeah. wedding's valid. Mm. Uh, when I first did my first wedding, I took my letter into my first count to the county clerk and uh, the clerk said, what, what's this? Mm. You know, and I explained, <laughs> he goes, we don't care. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, nice. so anybody do it? Uh, uh, some states, as long as you are able to do a wedding in the, your home state, they recognize it. But uh, it's it, it's just going to go state by state. At one time, and I don't know, uh, Lori and Dan, if they still do this in Wisconsin, you uh, if you were coming in from out of state, you had to be vetted by someone who was already uh, uh, an efficient and recognized by the state of Wisconsin. So you know, at the quirks are there. Mm -hmm. So that, did that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it did it, Ricky? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, uh, 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 and I, I don't, I uh, can't, I'm not a lawyer. I can't speak to Georgia, but I, I do remember when uh, Obergfell was decided, the Virgin Islands legislature adamantly refused to change the Virgin Islands laws. Mm -hmm. But the judiciary went straight ahead with it, just ignoring so. It may be a case of a law that's been nullified. Okay. Okay. So we have a question about uh, coming of age ceremonies. Do you think there? Do we think there would be any benefits for U.S. Uh, the secular community to do, like let's say, the equivalent of a bar mitzvah, or you know, the key, or yeah, I was just thinking like about that, that the yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Did you want to? answer that first do i think the, the question says do i think there's value in doing it yeah or, like coming of age ceremonies oh, or I think, like i think there is value in celebrating anything you want to celebrate yes i want to celebrate that i've had my life since 2008 okay <laughs> i mean whatever i want to ce celebrate whatever is important in your life to mark throw a party for it why not yeah <laughs> I agree 100%. You know, it doesn't even have to be relegated to like so the mm -hmm. 16s or, you know, or, and, and I certainly wouldn't want to do something like, uh, I mean, isn't, isn't the bar mitzvah, uh, the marking of the uh, migva, which is the circumcision? Or oh, no, um, bar mitzvahs, I think it's when it's, it's, it's just coming, of, coming age, of age, when they coming okay. of age, when they technically become um, a, okay. an, an yeah. adult. So, or I mean, yeah, it, that can be done. We have birthday parties every year. I mean, you know, that certainly can be if if we want if if uh, if the family or the couple or anyone wants to do something like that with a um, you know with a celebrant, then certainly we could do that. I think there is a lot of value in celebrating or acknowledging whatever we want and having someone who represents your your non religious perspective to do it. Celebrant to celebrate the joining of this non monogamous, like let's say, trial. Yeah. Oh, that's. Legal, but they like mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You can take probably pieces from the handbooks, 
you know, like the Humanist Society handbooks, any language about love, you know, about commitment, stuff like, you know, for, for my ceremony that I, that I performed, I talked about how marriage isn't easy and that there are times where you may feel like you want to walk away, but you know, just, um, I, and almost anything can be a good resource. So incorporating poems, you know, incorporating songs, you know, it just in, incorporating things that you, that it, from any form of pop culture, I think is, is a good way to, you know, that's a good thing to incorporate into ceremony for that. The thing I think is a good, what I think is a good thing about being a humanist celebrant is like I said at the beginning of the question, which is you can celebrate anything you want to celebrate. You can celebrate it however you want to celebrate it. I mean, there might be certain legal boxes that have to be checked off, but besides those boxes that have to be checked off, you know, the world is your oyster, right? Do whatever you want to do to set however you want to celebrate it. Like I said, if we want to celebrate, you know, a triad commitment to each other. I mean, I don't know, you know, you might want to count, you might want to celebrate getting a new sub for all I know. Yes, I'm a little bit. <laughs> yeah, like celebrating, you know, like, um, like however so many years with your, you know, with your mommy dominant or something like that. Yeah, I mean, anything. I mean, I mean, I think anything can be celebrated, yeah. like I said, you know, and I think that's the good thing about being a humanist celebrant is it opens our eyes to ceremony, to things that might be, want to be formally celebrated that traditionally churches and religious organizations have not celebrated, you know, yeah, we right. can, and we which include, which of that. course that, that includes quote unquote, non-traditional types of relationships, yeah, you know, triads, exactly. you know, po um, polyamorous relationships, ethical non-monogamy, you know, group marriage, you know, or slash plural marriage truly, or whatever. I truly think in the near future, there are, will be divorce parties. Yeah. I think there will oh, be. They, oh, people definitely do have them. <laughs> I certainly would be willing to officiate that. <laughs> yeah, like some, like some, you know, some people, some people actually do that. Like, oh, yes, yeah. finally, yeah. like, oh, I finally, the divorce, divorce went party. through. Some people, you know, get a cake and they'll have like a figure, a, yeah. a, a soul figure on the cake. Yeah. It's like, it's like, what's going on here? Like, girl, <laughs> that divorce finally went through. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> oh <Lord. laughs> what did he say? He said he has a divorce ceremony. Oh, oh, wow. that, oh yeah, I need to do that. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. So there is another question. Is there one spot for people to look up the requirements by state or country or, or county, or do you have to go to each place? Uh, there, it, there are, um, there, there are sites where you can look up the, I don't have them handy, but all you need to do is just, uh, you know, go to, you can type in, you know, you can type in marriage requirement by state yeah or, and yeah. i'm sure some... well the thing well but the thing about I, I see your hands back there but i think you all i don't i wonder if there truly is one you know all-knowing source because this because generally speaking like marriage is by the, the county you mm -hmm. know you shaking your head it's by state in most locations there is a website where you, I, I don't remember off the top of my head but we always know yeah, I mean, it's by state, but like this county may say. Yeah, but I'm saying like any particular. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there, is it uh, through the, through like courthouses necessarily or just just a regular like, I guess, city or state? County clerk. Okay. Yeah. Usually the magistrate uh, but, uh, division. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. And right. So, like Virginia, they want to have a brick and mortar church. And they're going to celebrate, they give you a hard time. In Northern Virginia, they don't without a lynch for a So just make sure you're in touch with 
whatever count it is, figure mm -hmm. out. In Maryland, there's a joke that a dog can marry somebody because they don't care. That's where I live, whatever that place is. Virginia as well. So mm -hmm. just make sure that you go directly to that, that county. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, sadly, you know, the whole state's rights thing. So each, each state, you know, has their different level of, you know, oh, we don't care to, uh, yes, we care very, very much. So. Cool. So there's one final question here about does a celebrant solemnize religious humanist ceremonies differently from secular ones where the parties have complementary needs? I think once again, it's uh, up to the, it is up to the couple. It is up to their, you know, it is their, it, it's up to their wishes. Um, you know, it just depends. But then I think it's also good for us as celebrants to kind of try to encourage some middle ground there, especially if we're talking about an interfaith couple. You know, yeah. um, you know, we we definitely want you know people to get the ceremony that they want. However, if you're coming to a humanist celebrant, you know that you're you're going to have a ceremony where there is not much. There's not going to be much religion in it at all. Yeah. So, um, you know, I certainly think that while, you know, we want to honor some rituals, certainly the, the religious part isn't going to be one of them. So uh, you, you may want to, you know, it's up to the it's up to the client or the couple to choose very carefully and know what, you know, what it is that they want that, um, you know, and that they're going to get the type of ceremony that they, you know, that they're, they're really that, they're, that that will be memorable for them. Plus, they have to understand that if you if you if they want something more secular, that there is going to be that there is going to be like little to no religion involved in it. So, you know. Any more questions in the chat? All right. So somebody asked if a couple asked us to include traditional parts of a ceremony and religious language would or would we? Say I no. <laughs> I don't think I could do I that. Would. I mean, no. If you yeah, absolutely you insist me. that we include God in any part of that ceremony, I would have to refer I you would. to somebody else. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I mean, absolutely. Because that was, you know, you you need to go to a minister, right? If that's the case. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think as celebrants, you know, we do want to make sure we are client based, but this is also value based. Mm -hmm. And there are mutual values here when it comes to non-religious. Um, and, and, and this is also taking me back to if the, the part about interfaith couples, if, if one is absolutely insistent that um, there, is, there is language about God, first of all, that's an issue with the relationship too. But, yeah. you know, we're talking about, yeah, there's, there, there's a hard line that I would draw, <laughs> that I think we would draw when it comes to incorporating uh, heavy, heavy religious language, especially if you want us to mention a word God now. I'm not yeah. going to do it. Yeah, I would think. <laughs> that's that's good incentive well yeah that yeah. that is that is something yeah. to consider but yeah i have a i have a i have a hard time i would definitely have a hard time with that yeah we do mm -hmm. Yeah. And plus, I would also think, you know, it, it would depend because, you know, you bring up interfaith and sometimes there are certain types of of um, of rituals that it may not necessarily be religious, but but sort of inter intertwined more culturally. And so those can always be separated from sort of the more religious aspect. Like, let's say um, you marry uh, a couple who wants to, like, jump the broom. That's not yeah. that's not necessarily like religiously related. Right. Or if you marry like two folks who are like who who are secular, but they're like culturally Jewish, eth ethnically Jewish, and they want to break the glass, I don't think is or, 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 or I don't know, you know, I'm not aware, but I guess hopefully breaking the glass is at the end isn't something that's tied religiously or something. So, but, you know, if you want, you know, by the power invested in me, by blah, 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 blah yeah, <laughs> come on now, come on now. Do we have any more questions? All right.